Happy Friday, folks, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security professional, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting June 2nd, 2014. Let's dive right into the security news. I'm going to sneak in a fourth story this week, even though it's boring, it's kind of practical. And that is that this week was Microsoft Notification Week. On Thursday, Microsoft warned that next Tuesday is patch day, and according to their advanced notification, there's going to be seven bulletins that fix flaws in Windows, Internet Explorer, Office, and Link, which is the communicator replacement. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to get those patches next Tuesday. And by the way, they're probably going to fix the zero-day IE flaw that the zero-day initiative disclosed a few weeks ago. So let's start our more interesting three stories with the latest NSA and Snowden leak. Early in the week, the New York Times released an article talking about how the NSA harvests millions of images from the internet a day. And as they've stored up a big database of these images, they can start to use facial recognition software to search this big image database when they're looking for alleged suspects to crimes. Now, no one really has the details of where and how they collect the images. Later in the week, uh, the Admiral and a member of the NSA said that they don't actually use this database to search for American citizens, nor do they try to scan for U.S. citizen images. But when you're collecting a ton of data from the internet, it's really hard to know where you're getting it and what you're getting. So it's probably likely that they do have private citizen images in their database as well. But really what matters more is, is who they're searching for in this database and how accurate facial recognition software is. And that's up for debate. So if you're interested in this story, be sure to check the reference section to the blog post associated with this video where I'll put links to other information about this particular leak. So there's actually two stories this week that qualify for the biggest story of the week. It's hard to pick which one is bigger. So I'll start by talking about the latest open SSL patch and vulnerabilities. Late in the week on Thursday, the open SSL team released an update that fixes six vulnerabilities in the open SSL product. This is of course the same product that had the big heart bleed SSL vulnerability a while ago that allowed any attacker anywhere in the world to steal data from your memory of of your OpenSSL server or client. Well, this week, the six vulnerabilities were a little bit different. Uh, they actually ranged in complexity and scope. Some were buffer overflow flaws that allowed code execution. However, those flaws were only present if you happen to use a particular feature on OpenSSL called DTLS, which is essentially a UDP datagram version of TLS, which a lot of servers don't really use. However, the big vulnerability that's getting a lot of attention was a new man-in-the-middle flaw. Essentially, OpenSSL suffers from a flaw in the way its change cipher suite handles particular communications, which the researchers calling a CCS injection vulnerability. Long story short, if an attacker can get between an SSL client and an SSL server, both of which must have vulnerable versions of SSL, the attacker can intercept their traffic and decrypt the SSL communication. Now, the good news is not many people use OpenSSL as a client. You know, for instance, your browser does not use OpenSSL to negotiate SSL connections. It uses its own SSL packages. So this vulnerability won't affect many people. However, Android devices happen to use OpenSSL as a client. And also, this flaw is mitigated by the fact that an attacker actually has to intercept your traffic in a man-in-the-middle attack, unlike the Heartbleed flaw, which anyone on the internet could exploit from anywhere. So that makes this a little harder to, to leverage. That said, a wireless network is a perfect place for attackers to intercept traffic. What all this means is this flaw seems to primarily affect Android devices when they're on wireless networks. In the end, this flaw is 
not nearly as risky or severe as the heart bleed vulnerability we had a few months ago, but it is very significant. So if you have OpenSSL products in your network, if you're using OpenSSL, update it. Also, many of your vendors probably use SSL in their product as well, and it could be OpenSSL, so you may expect some vendor patches as well. Finally, if there's WatchGuard customers listening, our devices do use OpenSSL, and they do suffer from this vulnerability or these vulnerabilities to some extent, although in many cases they're hard to exploit in the real world. So that said, our developers have been working on patches for this, and we do expect at least the XTM ones early next week. So if you're a WatchGuard customer, be sure to follow our blog to look for some updates to your security appliance. So the last story of the week is a big global botnet takedown. And I'm not sure if this is the biggest story of the week, maybe the OpenSSL one was, but this one happened early in the week and it had many, many different news organizations covering it. Long story short, the FBI in cooperation with uh, UK and global authorities, as well as uh, companies like Microsoft, succeeded in interrupting the communication mechanism used by one of the big Zeus variant botnets, a particular variant called Game Over or Gazus. Anyways, the authorities have temporarily hijacked this command and control infrastructure. That means if you're infected with Game Over Zeus, it can't contact its authors right now, it can't get updates, and it can't do anything bad. And by the way, this happens to be one of the big botnets that was distributing the big CryptoLocker ransomware. So that means if you have CryptoLocker right now, it may not be able to call home, which is both good and could also be bad if you're one of the people who are trying to pay the ransom, which, by the way, I don't recommend. In any case, this is probably only a temporary situation. Whatever the good guys did to hijack the command and control infrastructure, Zeus is very resilient. In a couple weeks, in two weeks, it's probably going to regain access if a computer is still infected. So, the practical advice is, right now, you should be scanning all your internal computers looking for Zeus and CryptoLocker. If you haven't run a full system scan for a long time, definitely do so. And by the way, there's tools on the internet from various security uh, organizations that have specific Zeus scanners and rootkit killers that will really weed out Zeus and CryptoLocker. Now, as an aside, besides taking down the command and control infrastructure, the US government, the FBI, is also accused a Russian alleged gangster of running this whole operation. And they say he has over 1 million computers in his botnet control. He's made over $100 million from Zeus and CryptoLocker and things like that. And this particular Russian gangster, whose name I can't pronounce, has not been actually arrested yet. He's still uh, out in the open, but a formal accusation has been sent and there is a wanted poster for him from the FBI. So that's the latest botnet news. Be sure to scan for Zeus and be sure to regularly run products like IPS antivirus and if you have it, advanced threat protection to protect you from these all the time. And of course, WatchGuard XTM devices can put all of those type of security controls in one easy to use appliance. So that's all this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. As usual, there's a ton of other stories, so be sure to check the reference section of the blog post associated with this video, which, as always, I will put on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. If you haven't subscribed to this blog, please do so. We post regular news. For instance, when we knew about the OpenSSL flaw, we posted a blog post telling about it on Thursday. So join that blog. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.